Now, Ugandan pop star turned MP Bobby Wine has told the BBC he is willing to die fighting for freedom. The politician is currently in the U.S. receiving medical treatment after he was allegedly tortured by Ugandan security forces. The military denies the allegations. Well, earlier today, he held a press conference in Washington, and the BBC's Zuhura Yunus has been watching developments for us. Zuhura, what did he say today? Well, I spoke to him yesterday evening, but today he said that he would rather present himself as a survivor rather than a victim. And he insisted, he made his stance that he will continue to advocate what he termed as people's power. His condition yesterday when I saw him, he was weak, but he was uh, kind enough to be charming. We cracked a little bit of jokes. But he was walking by an assistant of a crutch, and when I asked him, do you feel pain in your leg, he said, no, in fact, I have a back injury. We had a brief interview, and the first thing I wanted to know from him is what exactly did the soldiers do to him? And this is what he had to say. They did unspeakable things to me. They brutally arrested me, beat me, tortured me, abused me and left me for dead. Well, um, I'm even talking to you against my doctor's orders because to them I'm supposed to be resting. But like I've always said, the fire that burns inside me burns hotter than the fire that burns outside me. I'm sure the fire is burning on the other side as well. So how are you going to deal with that? Well, I'm going to continue, uh, most importantly, calling upon Ugandans especially the young people, to stand up for what they believe in, to not give up, never to give up, to continue pushing until they get the freedom and dignity that they deserve. Ugandans have been tortured and killed for very many years. It has been happening, it is happening, and it will continue to happen until we as Ugandans put an end to it. So, are you planning to go back to Uganda? Of course I'm going back to Uganda. Uganda is my home. I don't have any other home. That is where I was born, and that is where I will be buried. The ordeal that you narrated in length on your social media, the authorities back in Uganda uh, claim that it's fake, and even the crutches that you have are fake. What do you have to say about that? Well... Does anybody get surprised when the authorities torture Ugandans and say it's fake? So what exactly is your plan when you go back? I'm going to continue the fight for freedom. And it is the fight that we must either win or die trying. We all know that uh, you're commonly known as the president of the ghetto in Uganda. Uh, do you want to be the president of Uganda? It's not about me, and it's not about being president. We just want to be free. I just want to live in a country that I'm proud of, a country that makes sense to me and to every other Ugandan. Well, that is Bobby Wine sounding very defiant. And when I asked him when is he going back, he wasn't that clear, but he sounded uh, like very, very soon. And he's waiting for the doctor uh, to give him, to allow him to go back to Uganda. Back to you, Sophie. Zuhura Yunus there for us in Washington. Uh, let's now go straight to Kampala and speak to the government spokesperson, Ofuono Opondo. Thanks for taking time to talk to us on Focus on Africa. You've had these allegations. They are quite serious. Uh, made by Bobby Wine. What is the government reaction? Well, thank you, Sophie. Serious but unsubstantiated, said repeatedly. The good thing is that there are many medical examinations that have been done on Bobby Wine back here in Uganda, four of them. The last one being last Friday by a team of specialist doctors composed, of, composed by the Uganda Medical Board. We would be very glad to have Mr. Bobby Wine return with his, with his medical examination from UK or from wherever it is, and then we match that with what we have in Uganda. Do we know what we you want re again to repeat? Do, do we know we want what again to repeat? Sorry, the Uganda government does not condone torture. Where it happens, we investigate and punish culprits. We would be very glad Mr. Bobby Wine to come and raise those concerns in, co in a competent court 
and the findings will be made. Right. Um, you have said the government, uh, the medical centers in, in, in Kampala have already conducted the examination. When I spoke to you the last time, you said this will be out in two days or three days. What are the results? Do we know? Because that's what Ugandans really want to know to counter the allegations by Bobby Wine. Well, let Mr. Bobby Wine come. Medical ethics does not um, provide me with the liberty to disclose what it is. Let Mr. Bobby Wine come. In the presence of his doctors, in the presence of his lawyers and the government, the results will be available to him. What guarantees are there for Bobby Wine that he's going to be safe? Well, let him just come back. He's not the first one. You remember a few years ago you hosted Geno Sejusa. He is back here. You hosted Mr. Laro Tuno. He's back here. There are many Ugandan opposition leaders bigger than Mr. Bobby Wine who are back here. There are those who have taken up arms. They have made, up, they have made peace not join the government, but they have made peace and they are back in Uganda. Mr. Bob Wine is free to come back and therefore should not make his return a big issue. Let him return. But, but is, is the government worried or not worried at all? Because this is a man who has a huge following now in Uganda and his case um, is being beamed across the world, really. I'm not sure about a, a big following that can be tested at elections or in mobilizing for whatever cause. Mr. Bob Wine talks about freedom we are talking about freedom liberty emancipation and empowerment nrm government stands for all those four comprehensively for him to have come from the ghetto as he claims into parliament and is now talking on bbc really he should be able to credit or give some credit to the government that exists today all right uh, ofono opondo thanks for taking time to talk to us here in focus in africa thank you